<laughs> so we just looked at uh, arc length, and what we're going to now do is think about curves, not in terms of their arc length, but we're going to rotate them and think about the surface that that revolves into. So before, we were thinking about areas rotating into volumes, or regions rotating into volumes. So we had a two-dimensional rotating and picking up a third dimension when it rotates. Now we're going to have a one-dimensional curve is going to rotate and pick up a dimension, creating a two-dimensional surface. So the pictures we draw might be similar, but the calculations we're going to be doing are quite different. Yep. Sweet. However, um, yeah, it will be a circle. So like one of the measurements will be circular. The other one will be the arc length. And you'll see how it looks. So we'll just take some generic curve like this. What I'm not going to do is fill in. I don't want to shade in the area because we're, we're just thinking about a curve, a one-dimensional object, not the shade of region. And then we're going to rotate this. And we'll rotate right about this line right here. So I'll draw the rotated part in this blue. So there's our rotated surface. What we are not going to count, which is very easy to compute, are the two caps, or the bottom and the top, depending on how you look meaning this shaded part, we're not going to worry about that. Super easy to compute. You know the radius, you can get the area of that real fast. Same thing, we've got another circle lid right here. We're not going to worry about those two. Those are trivial to add up. That's like a middle school geometry problem. So we're not going to worry about that. We're going to worry about the difficult part, which is that funky shape that's out there. So how do we compute arc length at the very beginning? What did we do? How do we subdivide? So we, so we'd use rectangles when we want an area. We didn't use any rectangles. We use line segments. Line segments. So we're going to cut up our curve and pretend that it's little tiny straight line segments. And then we're going to look and see what does one of those little line segments rotate into. So I'm just going to pick. It doesn't really matter where you go. Just pick some part of this. We're going to approximate it with a line segment. I can't really see that blue on the black. So let me go green. I think that'll show up a little better. There we go. All right, so I want to see what does that rotate into. So without polluting this picture with too much more scribbles, let's rotate it next to this. So I'll rotate over here on the right side. So we have some curve right there, or I should say some line segment. All right, I can say this looks like a Reese's cup. Without a doubt. Well, I mean, if you smoothed it off, you didn't make all the fancy ridges. But all right, so we want to know what what about this shape do I want to compute? For example, I don't care about the volume. The non-ridged area. So I want to get the area of this kind of exterior part. I could shade this. So basically, that plus the rotated part on the other side. So I want the, you can think about it as the exterior surface area. So I want to get this area. If this was a actual cylinder, it's not quite a cylinder because it has some angle on it. It's not quite per uh, parallel to our rotation line. But if in a perfect world, we would rotate into a cylinder and it would be super easy to get the area. How do I get surface area? If we had a cylinder, how do I get surface area? So cylinder, so it would be circumference. Times height. Wait, yeah, times height. It's going to look more like a width because our height sideways. You have to rotate your head sideways to see the height. But I'm just going to call it height. So we have one slight problem is that our Reese's cup is a little bigger on one side than the other. So we don't quite have a cylinder. So we have, you could think of it, it's like a slice out of a cone is basically what it is. So 
So it's a little slice out of a cone. So <clears throat> the way we're going to measure height is a little strange. Normally, we would measure the height. Let's see. There's a few ways to do it. I guess you could just draw the height right there. The way we're going to measure it is we're going to actually use, and I'll just write on the top side, we're going to use the length of that right there. As opposed to, if you took the standard height, it would look more like this. It would be a little shorter. Okay, so we're going to take that slanted height instead of the perpendicular height. Good news is we know how to compute that. That's basically the arc length. So we're going to take that as the height. And the other measurement, what do we need for the circumference? What type of measurement? Yep, we need a radius. That's all we need. We radius times 2 pi. So radius should be pretty clear. We'll use the radius at the beginning right here. So that vertical measurement right there. Radius, so that'll be r. Height, of course, we'll use h. So our surface area, we're ready to write that down. So let's go with sa for surface area. So circumference 2 pi r height h, so we've got 2 pi r h. All right, so any questions on coming up with that? Okay, so the only tricky thing is h is the arc length. So this, <coughs> we put this into an integral. So height is going to be, this is the arc length. So we're going to have area, surface, area equals integral a to b, 2 pi r. Uh, what is r going to be now? I should have written that before. What is the radius? So I need a name for this function. So we'll call it f of x. So the radius is just whatever y value you have. So it'll be your f of x. That's going to be your radius. And then arc length we're going to use. So we got f of x for the radius. Now the arc length, I'm just copying from what we did last uh, section. So again, we got, yep. Yeah. Okay. So, and then the revolved version of that, which I didn't want to draw on top because it yeah, looks kind of nice. So I, yeah, I want to move it over so I could, you know, write radius and height on it. Okay. Okay. So this is the surface area formula you need. This is, of course, if you have a function of x. If you have a function of y, it's pretty much the exact same thing. You just have little y's all over the place. And you pull two pi out, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you can pull the two pi out. So however you want to write it, maybe I'll just go ahead and write it like that. Oops. So if things are a function of y, you're basically writing the exact same thing. 2 pi integral a to b. Now it's f of y square root 1 plus f prime y squared dy. Now, of course, this probably is too much real estate on your cheat sheet. So if you want one nice uh, version, just leave out the x and the y altogether. So we just have 2 pi integral a to b, f squared root 1 plus f prime squared. So that'll take care of both of those two. Now I recommend you use the shorter version 
on your cheat sheet from the beginning so that you're used to it. So there's your all-in-one formula right there. There's really not much more to service area than this. So we're going to do some examples. You could parameterize uh, have a differential form of service area where you can go from like A to X like we did before, but that's not really needed. It's not in your textbook, but you can parameterize a lot of these things. Uh, so let's go ahead and just jump into some examples. I only have two examples here. So I'm intentionally leaving some space here. I'm going to write a word here. So revolve this uh, with x between 1 and 2 about the x-axis. Now, of course, we're in service area section, so I'm about to ask for the service area. How do you know, just without even writing down, find service area? What gives it away that this is a service area and not a volume? So there's only one function. Uh, the other thing that gives it away is there's very specific x values right here. But generally, I, I will probably always write revolve the curve. What would you expect to see there if this was going to be a volume? RBB. Yeah, you see the word region somewhere, or RBB. It would be abbreviated. So if you don't see the word region, most likely it's a curve you're rotating. All right, and I want to find the surface area. So they're back, way back in Calculus 1 class, there was uh, questions that you could either have to maximize or optimize, or there was other related race questions. And the way you tell them apart was by the language they use. A maximized question was like, find the largest, smallest, cheapest, expensivest, or usually where the ends in EST. Uh, whereas related rates, it was all changing over time. That was how you tell the two problems apart. The way you tell these apart, you're basically starting with a region or starting with a curve. The rest of the problem looks very similar. You're going to rotate that thing about a line. So it's all about regions or curves. All right, so step one, draw, graph this out so you have some idea of what's going on. You don't actually have to do that in general, but we're going to do that for these problems. All right, so graph the curve. So here's part of the square root function. What did I already mess up in my graph? So it should be from 1 to 2. I went 0 to 2. So I already drew the curve way too big. So we need to come through, get rid of it. I should not have any of this part of the curve down here. All right, so rotating about the x-axis. So here we go. Probably the only important reason to, uh, to draw this out is so you get your radius correct. In this case, our radius is just the f of x function. So I'm going to draw our measurements in. So here is our, how do I know this is a, a function of x? What's that? So basically, what coordinate would I need to change 
the way it's written, basically if I change my x-coordinate, that's what will move my radius. So that's why my radius is a function of x. So there's not really a window that we're washing now, but if you think, if I change my y-coordinate, we're not going anywhere. Like this radius is not covering the entire curve. So this is a function of x, so we need an r of x function. In this case, it's the 2 square root x. That's all the radius is, right there. And our original f of x is 2 square root x, so what I'm going to need is f prime, and then f 1 plus f prime squared. That's what I'm going to be plugging in. So f prime should be x to the negative 1 half power, or 1 over square root x. And now we have 1 plus f prime squared. So that's 1 plus 1 over x. So we're ready to write down our surface area, 2 pi. R, R of x. Actually, I'll write the generic form down. So we got fx square root 1 plus f prime x squared dx from a to b. And remember, every time you write it down, you remember a little better. So it might seem a little silly to write it down every homework problem that you do, but it's also one less thing you may have to look back and find in your cheat sheet. So it might save you a minute or two on your midterm, for example, or your final. All right, what is our a? What's the minimum x value? One, and our b will be two. So those are usually very obvious on the uh, surface area problems and arc length. f of x, that's two square root x, square root, I already computed one plus f prime squared, it's up on the upper right. All right, let's go ahead and finish this integral off. So are there any questions about the setup before we actually do some calculus and not just geometry? Does it make a difference if you do the math before or after you plug it in? Uh, what do you mean do the math? Well, over there you take the interest or the derivative of the, of the x. Do you have? Oh, yeah, I, yeah I, I could do this work in inside. That's no problem. I don't know why I'm doing it out, outside. It just, I felt like doing it that way. I went with it. But yeah, it doesn't matter where you do it. All right, how in the world are we going to integrate this? Trig sub probably won't save us. I don't know any trig identities look like 1 plus 1 over a trig function. So, what can I do to simplify? Yep, multiply together. So we're gonna do some algebra. Multiply these two together. Didn't factor out uh, square root of x? No, factor out two though. No, I could yeah, I could bring the two to the front. So we got a four pi going on. Now inside, I got x times one plus one over x dx, and this is gonna simplify nicely to x plus one. All right, so at this point, you should be able to finish this integral off. So go ahead and integrate this. You may even be able to do a u sub in your head or a guess and check.
So without a calculator to approximate, that's about as good as it's going to get. Right there. So as you're noticing with arc lengths and surface areas, you're going to have a lot of times where you'll be having some function in square root. So a lot of forms end up looking really similar. So let's do the same problem, but I'm going to change the line we rotate. And I don't want to do the x-axis. Let's use y equals 10. So I want to do the exact same problem, but I want to rotate about y equals 10. So we get our curve y equals 2 square root x, x between 1 and 2. About the line y equals 10, I want to know surface area. So I'm doing a really fast sketch right here of our curve without being too careful. y equals 10 is going to be somewhere way up here. All right, I want you to figure out the radius now. And the radius is not just 2 square root x this time. So the radius is not measured. This is no longer the radius down here. That's the old radius. The new radius is where we're rotating to the curve. So that's our radius now. So on that surface area equation, that first length of the x is outside of the square root. Isn't it always going to be like at the point of the radius? Yeah, I probably should write it as r, which, that's not always yeah, let's come back. We'll come back to that, yeah. Big minus small always works, though, for these types. So your radius, you should have had 10 as your big. And small is the function itself. So you get 10 minus 2 square root x. So we're ready to write our surface area. 2 pi integral r square root 1 plus f prime x squared dx. So everything is almost the exact same. So we get integral from 1 to 2. Our radius is now 10 minus 2 square root x times square root 1 plus 1 over x. Isn't the 1 over x just squared? dx. No, it was a 1 over, let me go back. It was a 1 over square root x. Huh? Yeah, that's a derivative. So we squared, squared it and then added 1. Now to integrate this, I could distribute the square root across both of those two terms. So I get 10 square root 1 plus 1 over x minus 2 square root x square root 1 plus 1 over x. So we already know how to integrate the square root square root part. How in the world can we integrate the other part? 10 squared. I'm not really sure. I just made the problem up. I don't think a u sub is going to work. Could, but we still we're still gonna have to integrate that guy right there. I don't see a good way so to do it. Like yeah, I could multiply the ten inside, but that doesn't really change the form too much. 
Um, so I'm actually not sure how to integrate this thing on the left. But I do know how to integrate the thing on the right. Now in the real world, if you have this problem, what you'll do is you'll use, um, you'll break up the interval from one to two into lots of small pieces and actually go and use, uh, sum up the rectangles. So you can graph this out, this function out, and maybe break it into 10 pieces. If you have a computer, you probably break it into 1,000 pieces, 10,000 pieces, and compute it in half a second. So a lot of things are going to be computed uh, just using estimations. All right, so that's how to at least set it up. I'm not worried about solving this one. So our next and last example that we'll do So revolve the segment x equals 1 minus y. So we're going to revolve about the line x equals negative 1. So first of all, did I give the original curve as a function of x or a function of y? So it's given as a function of y. I also gave the bounds in terms of y's. So this is set up to use a uh, function of y a little more easily. I could figure out the bounds on x and solve for y and get a function of x, but let's just go ahead and write it as a function of y right now. All right, so graph this out. How do you graph if you're not sure? Yeah, plug with char. I call it the clueless method. So you can plot some points. Probably let x equal 0, see what y is. Let y equal 0, see what x is. You're looking at a line, by the way. Not just because I wrote the word segment next to it, but everything is a first power. So it's all linear right there. So. You can graph two points. That's more than you, that's the exact number you need to draw your line. So I'm going to call this 1 minus y function f of y. <clears throat> so that'll be my function of y right there. And we need to rotate. The reason you, the pretty much only reason you draw a picture is so you get your radius right. That's about the only thing, the only benefit to drawing a picture is so you get your radius correct. So in this case, our radius, I'll switch over to green. Our radius is going to be measured horizontally. That's another indication this will be a function of y. How do we move across the curve? We have to change our y value to move across the curve. So our r of y, big minus small. What is our big? One minus y. One minus y, that's our function that's changing. What about small? Negative one. Negative one. So we got 1 minus y plus 1. So we got 2 minus y is our radius. And we're ready to set up service area now. 2 pi integral r square root 1 plus. Now we have f prime of y squared dy.
So our radius two minus y. Now I better take. Uh, oh, you know what? I will just compute all this stuff right inside the integral. So what is f prime? I'm just looking at f right here. What is the derivative of one minus y? Negative one. Remember, you're taking a y derivative now. So it'll be a negative one. Make sure you square it. So we got one plus one, that's square root two. So we have two square root two pi. I'm bringing that <coughs> constant out front. So this is the easy, easiest integral of the week probably, right here. setting this up. I would probably insult your intelligence to solve this one. Might be too easy. So we won't go ahead and do that. So this is the end of service areas, right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not, they're not nearly as complicated as volumes. Volumes are a lot more tricky, especially the ones that were not circular revolutions, basically. The very beginning of 6.1 was probably the toughest part of chapter six. It's pretty much all downhill after that in chapter six. <laughs> What's that? 